to the secret sound. Let's listen. What an interesting sound! What's that sound? Stay tuned to find out! Alright my friends, get up from your seats and join us as we sing and get up and dance for Jesus! Woo! Alright, if you guys are ready, then let's sing it out. Come on!
Let's sing again. Always and forever. Pastor Sylvia, I don't feel so good. Lily, it's because of all these cheese balls. Gee, what? No, I'm fine. I'm fine. Lily, sit back down. <sighs> You're not feeling well because of all these cheese balls you ate. Remember Jubilee 30? We were gonna eat healthier, make healthy habits? No, 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 I'm okay. I think you have a stomach ache from all that junk food. So what should I do now, Pastor Sylvia? Mm, I say we start with getting some rest, drinking plenty of water, and cut these for a bit. <laughs> what? No, this is my favorite snack. I'm fine. Fine, see, box 532, here I go. See? See, you're not fine, you are sick because of all these cheese balls. You know, we really need to talk about changing your eating, ha eating habits to eating healthier snacks, like, hey, carrots, same color. How about broccoli? Your favorite. Oh, Lily, they're not that scary. No, eating healthy can be fun. So what do you say? Can we cut these? But Pastor Sylvia, I'm not the only one obsessed with cheese balls on this team. No, then who else can be as crazy as you about these cheese balls? Well, Pastor Sylvia, let me tell you a story about the missing cheese balls. Are you sure you're okay, Lily? You seem a bit down. Yeah, I guess. It's just that when I went to get my cheese balls, it went missing, and I know I didn't grab them. I wonder if someone else did. <laughs> I wonder who it could have been. I don't know, but it has to be someone here at Sunlight Studios, because who else would eat my precious cheese balls? Catherine? Uh, huh? What? 
Did you perhaps eat my cheese balls? Me? Of course not. You're lying, aren't you? First Aiden, now you? Do we have to talk to Pastor Sylvia? No, I don't, I don't think that we have to bother. Oh, uh, hey guys, have you seen my... Uh, what's going on here? Aiden, we need your help. My cheese ball jar went missing, and I think I know the culprit. Hmm, well, this sounds like a job for... Uh, can you guys give me like a minute? Okay, sure. You done? <coughs> One minute. Detective Parker, Aiden Parker. Do you sometimes get the urge to just celebrate or to just dance with so much joy? Or maybe sing at the top of your lungs? <laughs> sometimes I get these moments while driving, grocery shopping, or even taking my dog potty. But this joy explodes, especially on Sunday mornings, thinking about worshiping together with you, my spiritual family. This splurge of joy, excitement, gratefulness comes from knowing that Jesus, the King of the universe, loves me and calls me his own. Today is a very, very special Sunday. It's particularly special because it's Mother's Day. Our moms are so awesome, agree? They are like superheroes without capes. Not they are like, they are superheroes without capes. On this earth are many, many things that show God's fingerprint. But one big way we can see and understand that God is working is through our mamas, our mommies, my mommies. So I'm going to give you about 15 seconds to go. Go and hug your mom. Give her kisses and tell her, thank you. Thank you for showing me God's love and grace. Thank you for being my mommy. I love you. Ready, go. your mom feels so loved. I had a chance to interview some of my friends. Shall we take a look at what they said? So now, Oma, there's a chair to get boy. One thing that I love about my mom is that she is my love charger. My love charger. When I come home from work and it's just been a really long day and I'm super tired, my mom is waiting for me in the kitchen and says, Hannah, 충전해줄게. And she hugs me and I feel like I'm charging in her love and I feel a lot better afterwards. What do you like most about mommy? I like her because she's really kind to us and makes you sometimes helping us. And I like Molly because she is kind to us. What do you like most about your mom? Um, what most I like about my mom is that when I'm um, sad, she tears me up. What I like about my mom is that she gives me big hugs all the time. Ryan, what do you like most about mommy? I love my mom because she's caring and loving to me. My favorite thing about my mom is probably her warm hugs or um, how she's so loving and gracious to me even when I don't feel like it um, or maybe her laughter when it fills up the room. And so I just love everything about my mom. The most thing that I like about my mom is hugging me. I mean, what do you like most about mom? She makes me happy and she directs me and teaches me and guides me. She loves me and she gives me shelter and makes me food. One thing I like most about my mom is that she wakes up early in the morning to make us lunch, even if we have to go to school early in the morning. Um, one thing I like about my mom is that 
she cleans our room and does all the other stuff for us. <laughs> an amazing adventure where we reset from old to new. Our teachers and friends have been breaking old habits and making new ones for Jesus. I challenge you to continue to make choices in your life to reflect Jesus as number one. You know, it might be a good time to recap what we have learned so far. So, pop quiz! Week one, our key word was A, familiarity, B, exodus, or C, jubilee. If you said C, jubilee, you are right. Jubilee is a special celebration remembering exodus, the escape from Egypt. And we can have jubilee because of Jesus who has came to free us from our sin for good, forever. Week two, fill in the blank. We talked about Zacchaeus and how he had an with Jesus that changed his life forever. Zacchaeus, who once cheated people, didn't care for people at all. But with one blank, he gave back what he took and more. Our word for the week was... If you said encounter, you are correct. You guys are really good at this. Let's keep going. Guess the word. Week three, as we reset from distractions, we need to do this. Hmm. Did you unscramble the word? If you said focus, yes, yes, and yes. Remembering the story of Nehemiah, the wall must go up. But distractions came as people threatened him and came to fight and confuse. But Nehemiah was not focused on the enemy, but on how awesome and how good, how big God is. Let's be a church, girls and boys, that does not focus on ourselves, but on Jesus. How'd you do? Good? Did I hear too easy? You know what? I'm going to be back with a more challenging quiz next time. Be ready. Be ready. Today's word of the week is celebrate. Can you say celebrate and do a little dance? Celebrate. 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 When I hear the word celebrate, one key Bible figure that comes to mind is King David. Do you remember that story when the Ark of the Covenant was brought into Jerusalem? King David went jumping and leaping, praising the Lord, dancing with all his might, removing his royal garment. The story is recorded in the Bible. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 16 to 23. Let's watch this Bible story together. A long time ago, there was a box called the Ark of the Covenant. It was a holy box that contained items that reminded people of God's faithfulness to them. God's power surrounded this box. Moving it from one place to another required extreme care. King David decided to move the Ark to Jerusalem so that he could keep it safe. He gathered 30,000 of Israel's best men to move it. They loaded the ark on a cart and pushed it all the way to Jerusalem. While they moved the ark, David and the men celebrated with all their might. As they traveled, they made a joyful noise to the Lord with all kinds of noisemakers. 
As they brought the ark into the city of David, the streets were filled with shouts and the sound of trumpets. King David was so excited about the ark's arrival in his city that he was dancing in the streets in his underwear. His wife, Michael, saw this from a window and was unhappy with David's leaping and dancing before the Lord. David put the Ark of the Covenant in the place he had designated for it and went home. When he got there, Michael was waiting for him. She was disappointed and angry. She told David that the king of Israel should know better than to dance around in the streets in his underwear. But David was not embarrassed. He told her that he was dancing for the Lord. He said it didn't matter what he was wearing. He would celebrate and be happy before the Lord. He didn't care what anybody said or what other people thought. King David was so happy that he couldn't contain it. He had to dance and celebrate all the Lord had done for him and his people. The Ark of the Covenant represented God. King David celebrated because God had allowed King David to move the Ark into Jerusalem, appointing him to rule over God's people. Friends, did you know that we too, you and I, are also chosen by God? He calls us to be his church, his children, and he chooses us to be his hands and his feet here on this earth as we wait upon his second coming. The Ark of the Covenant was a sign to David that God is with him. But we, girls and boys, have something better than the Ark of the Covenant. We have God himself through Jesus and the Holy Spirit. The amazing truth about Jubilee is that it celebrates not only freedom, but it celebrates forgiveness and redemption. Jesus Christ came to forgive us of our sin once and for all by paying for our sin on the cross. Jesus came to redeem us back to God. What that means is that God, through Jesus, removed our label of sinner, liar, cheater, betrayer, mistake, forgotten, unworthy. And he clothes us with his righteousness so that now all those labels have nothing on us. Those labels do not mean who we are. They do not identify us, but we are now called righteous, child of God, saved, changed, free, and we have hope. It is because of Jesus that we are no longer slaves to sin. Jubilee 30 has been a great adventure, but I pray that you and I continue to make new habits that put Jesus first. I pray that you remember Jubilee just as God had led Israelites out of Egypt. Jesus had freed us from our sin. I pray that you choose to have encounter with Jesus who loves you oh so very much. I pray that you focus on Jesus when things are good and especially when things are bad because God is in absolute control at all times and i pray that my friends brothers and sisters celebrate celebrate the truth that we are a child of god you are a child of the one true king amen let's pray lord jesus what an adventure that jubilee 30 has been we are sorry for not placing you number one in our lives Please forgive us for choosing the world over you at times. Lord, we want to remember the work of the cross and live in celebration as a child of God. We are so thankful that we can experience joy in Jesus as we wait for Jesus' second coming. Give us joy. Give my friends joy because of who he is and what he will do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So, Miss Lillian Kim, where were you at 9.45 a.m.? I was going to the stock bar to get my favorite cheese balls and it was gone from my shelf. Hmm. 
Interesting. Where did you get that? Doesn't matter. Miss Catherine, could you tell me where you were at 9.45 a.m.? I was at the snack bar grabbing Lily's, I mean, I was at the cheese, I mean, I mean, bathroom. Mm-hmm. And where did you go after you went to the bathroom? Uh, well, I went to the lounge to write scripts for the skits. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. <sighs> well, sorry guys, I couldn't find any clues as to who took Lily's cheese jar. Uh, wait a minute. What is it, Dr. Parker? Our first clue! A uh, clue? Yes! You see, there's a trail of cheese balls, and if we follow it, we might find the cheese ball jar. And who took it? Well, it, it, it might just be a trail that an animal left, like a raccoon or something. How interesting! Interesting. How very interesting. Can you stop saying that? How and Miss Cat, you said you came to the lounge after you went to the bathroom, correct? Yes, I did. Why? Because the jar of cheese balls is right there! <gasps> I knew it! Well, I'm sorry, I just wanted a few, but I'm, I needed all of them. I need them. My cheese balls! <sighs> and you thought I was addicted? Well, looks like it's another case solved by Detective Parker. See, it's not just me who's obsessed with cheese balls. Mm. Sounds like I have to have a talk with the whole team about setting eating habits, healthy eating habits. You know, these cheese balls can be so good and ridiculously addicting, but we also have to remember that our body is a temple for God and it is our responsibility to take care of our bodies. And you know, that's what the Bible teaches us to do. These cheese balls are good, but we should set healthy eating habits. <sighs> okay, fine. What can I eat? I'm gonna go look in our pantry for some healthy snacks. How about we start with some soup and medicine for your stomach ache? Okay. I'll go get it. You can stay here.
today for May 9th, Mother's Day. We are going to be making some flowers and we have a surprise flower that um, you'll find out if you keep watching this video. And it's very important that you follow along with me today because well, just in case you couldn't get flowers for Mother's Day, well now we're gonna make it. Oh yeah. So if you have your extravaganza packets that we were able to pass out, then I want you to pull out the wax paper with a bunch of papers inside. And in it, you're gonna find some two green sheets of paper. I only have one right now, but and with some other colors of paper that we will be using for our flowers. So when you are ready, come join me. And today we're gonna be needing scissors and something to put all the flowers and the stems together with. So that could be glue, that could be tape, <gasps> that could be glue stick. Woohoo! And if you really want to use like a stapler or a hot glue gun, I wouldn't recommend it, but if you really wanted to try and that's all you had and there was absolutely nothing, then I guess you could do it. But otherwise, I want you to use these things. Ooh, ooh. And let us get started. And remember friends, if you guys need any help at any point, be sure to pause the video, maybe rewind to where you're like, I'm kind of confused. And then rewatch and maybe even ask for help. Say mom. Well, actually maybe not your mom because you're about to give the flowers to your mom. So maybe dad or like grandma, grandpa, older sister, older brother, I need help. And today we're gonna be working with scissors a lot. So what do I always say? Safety with scissors. And you can ask your older parents and siblings for help then. Okay, let's get started. And first, to start, we're gonna need some green paper. And we're gonna cut this paper in half. Okay, and then the next part, now that I have this cut here, the next part is we're gonna roll it. We're gonna roll this part up. And you can roll it this way, you can roll it if you really want a short flower, I guess you can roll it this way if you want. If not, um, I rolled it like this. And in order to roll it like this, you might need a pencil. You might need a colored pencil. You're gonna just need something that's round and small. Um, you could try even with a paintbrush. Make sure it's just not wet though. Ooh, it's like drying over here. Okay, but you know, maybe some of us, we don't have any of those things. So we'll be doing it by hand and you can see it with me how to do it by hand. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of the corner. And this is the part where if you need a glue, you can glue it. If you want to use tape, you can use tape. Previously, I've used tape, but today I want to use a glue stick. So I'm going to use a glue stick. Okay. Let's go and let's glue, let's glue, let's glue. And you don't need a lot. You just need to really make sure that the ends don't come apart. And so when you put this on, make sure you to hold it for a few seconds here, especially if you use glue or glue stick. Oh my goodness, this glue stick has a little tail. I don't know if you can see it, but I saw it. Okay, and so I'm gonna hold it here and I'm gonna count to five here. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, very good, very good. Now it doesn't come off. Oh, it kinda did. It's okay, we'll just hold it for like two more seconds. One, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, now it's very good. Now I have a beautiful stem. And so now we're gonna make this part, this flowery, cool part, okay? And so in order to do that, you need to choose one of the colors. I'm gonna choose yellow um, for demonstrating right now. And what you need to do is you're gonna take this and you're gonna be like, this is a nice piece of paper. This is a nice piece of paper. And after you said, this is a nice piece of paper, I want you to actually kind of measure and then just draw one straight line. And in order to draw a really nice straight line, you just gotta go like, whoo! You can't like, you can't be like, doo, 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 doo. you gotta go like, whoo! And you gotta use your entire arm. And if it's okay, if you need help, you're like, I can't draw a straight line like that, Christine. Use like, an, use like a ruler, use something that is like nice and straight, like a straight version of a letter, or like straight side of another paper, whatever it is. 
draw the line and you want to make sure you draw the line with some space from the bottom of the paper so right now I have it about maybe one fourth of an inch maybe that's more of a half of an inch I say it's like my like the top part of my pinky so maybe adult side adult pinky like so the top part of an adult pinky and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the scissors be careful with scissors safety with scissors and you're going to cut your paper all the way just to that line the sizing here is all up to you but the important thing is to do it okay friends and so I'm going to I already cut some for us the other day and so I already have it pretty prepared and now you might be thinking Christine how come yours is all rolled up well I'm about to show you that part so let's just say that you've cut all this paper up okay now before you move forward just stop just stop there okay now you just have the cut paper and what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a piece of pencil or a color pencil or a pen or anything with like a nice kind of rounder edge Okay, so now you have all these curls. Mm, like it could be like my hair. Woohoo! I now have curly hair. Woohoo! Um, <laughs> and once you do that, you're gonna take one of your stems. So I have three stems already made, but you can just take one, one stem, and then you're gonna take that and you're gonna wrap around the top part. So look at this. Look at this. Ooh, look at this. Yes, you're gonna take one end of our curly parts. And then you're gonna take, you're gonna take it. Actually, I don't want this stem. I like this. I like this stem. I think this stem might look better. And then you're gonna wrap it around at the top here. And then you're gonna, you're actually gonna want to glue this top part down um, or tape it down. I recommend to glue it down if you can, but if you want to tape it down, you can. And you're gonna glue the very end here and the part that's right next to the end right here. So these two parts and then you're gonna glue it together like so we've glued oh man we've made it we are making it but not breaking it friends okay okay so now that we've kind of glued this in place we can like go back and like some curls that we want to make sure it's recurled nicely curled nicely done and then maybe we want to make this part a little bit more curlier and that part a little less curlier and everything is okay Woo. well in order to give flowers, you gotta make many of them, right? Cause you wanna give a bouquet. So you just don't want one flowers in your bouquet. You want many types of flowers. So the other flower we're going to be making is a secret, but it's not really a secret. But essentially, I already have some pre-made here, but uh, in your papers, I also included like a, like some of these papers, we can cut into smaller pieces, right? And so I'm going to be taking another, I don't want to do a purple. I do want to do a purple. You're going to be taking this purple or uh, one of the construction papers and you're actually going to be cutting it into something smaller. Like it should be the size of an inch and maybe a fourth inch and a half. Um, and you're going to cut it down and it's important that you kind of get it straight across. 
but yeah. If not, we can measure it by our pinky. It is the length of almost one adult female pinky. Woo! So what, now that you have like all these squares, what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna fold them into a triangle. And you are going to be, you're going to be cutting out a circle or like a half circle from the triangle, okay? And you might be thinking that seems like a lot of difficulties here. But think of it as if you are making a giant hill. And it's okay if it's, the circle isn't perfect. Like my circle definitely is not perfect. Look at that, look at that. It kind of looks more like a teardrop than a circle. And that's okay because we're actually gonna cut this in half. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be rolling it. This, this is a very small circle. And whatever part, like if there's a little bit of pointiness, um, you can take your scissors and you can trim that off. Or you could be like, my flower is gonna have character. And that's fine too. And I'm actually gonna glue, I'm going to make and glue all of these, this circle. Ah! Christine on what to do fear not here let me make a bigger version of our circle of our triangle so this is a huge one this is a giant one and this is what I'm gonna do um, I'm going to fold this in triangle and you might be thinking Christine why are you doing it in a triangle and not in a square it is because then we can get the most area of the paper of the square and you're like wow nice and you're like this christine is not a circle this is a almost a diamond but it's not exactly a diamond it's like close if you have something that you can trace out a circle with you're more than welcome to use that as well but you're gonna cut it in half Woo, cut this in half and then you're gonna take one of the sides Take one, and then take the two ends, two ends, and then you're gonna make like a, like together, like if it's a hat. Together, like as if it is a hat. And uh, when you put it together, you can put glue or tape as it comes together to be a hat. And voila! Ah! We, we forgot to hold, friends. Hold it together, hold it together, sing a happy song. If you have other people who are helping you, have them sing a happy song. Um, if you glued and you're like, oh, it needs more help, then we can put some tape. And you know, right now, if you look at my paper, <laughs> um, there's like a little bit of like ridge at the front here. Um, if you want, you can go ahead and snip that so that it looks more like a cone, like a, like a ice cream cone or a snow cone. I like snow cones. I like snow cones a lot. My favorite flavor is the blue raspberry flavor and gets your tongue all blue, but that's besides the point. Okay, so now you can make like many of these. I just made so many. And so I already have some pre-made because I didn't want to make all of these again. And so what we're gonna do next, now that you have all these, is to put them on the stem. Now we have all these flowers, now we gotta put them on. flower types Woo! wow oh no it's like falling so friends maybe make sure that all of your glue is dry and all of your flowers are dry before giving it to mom but I'm very excited I'm very excited maybe I'll make maybe I'll make a bouquet out of all these flowers and then 
have that in the other video. And you might be like, other video? But in the other video, we'll go over how to make a bouquet out of all of these. So I'm so excited for you guys. I want you to give these flowers to your mom. Be sure to share this to our, our Instagram, Sunlight CCS, and be sure to tag us because we want to see all these beautiful flowers, okay? I'll see you guys next week. Bye! to the secret sound. Let's listen. Can you guess the sound? today I have a special announcement so listen closely for our last week next week in Jubilee 30 campaign we are challenging ourselves to live out church's vision which is Christ-centered community that lives out God's kingdom on earth there will be no separate Sunday sunlight kids service next week this does not mean no church no no we encourage all our families to visit other churches details have been emailed to your parents so if they have any questions or if you have any questions feel free to email me i'll put my email down below sounds good as we close out jubilee 30 let's quickly recap our words of the week are you ready i'm gonna try to do this in 15 seconds maybe less here we go Week one, Jubilee. Jubilee is the second exodus. We remember God's provision, his forgiveness and redemption. Week two, encounter. When we encounter Jesus, our lives are forever changed. Week three, focus. There are many things that distract us from focusing on, but we want to challenge ourselves to reset our focus back to God. Today, week four is celebrate. Just as King David celebrated before God and not people, we want to celebrate the truth that you and I are a child of the one true King. Remember our acronym, RESET. R, read, E, engage, S, savor, E, express, and T, trust in God this week, every single day. Amen? Amen. Let's do our chant before I let you go. Do you remember? I say reset, you said the year of Jubilee, we jump, jump, okay. Today we'll do double jump, how's that? Triple jump if you feel good. All right, here we go. Reset the year of Jubilee! 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 <laughs> Friends, I will see you, not next week, but in two weeks. Goodbye!